Phase have a very interesting history. If we look at two of Phase's last matches, they lost them. One was a terrible loss to Big Clan, 16-5, as was brought up by Pimp. And then uh, their... And, and P, on the other hand, have won both of their last matches, even though they were kind of close, like an OT versus Ents, and uh, a better win, I think, versus Vitality. Uh, so it's up in the air because we know that we're not getting that same Bimis as we did when they played against Big. And so hopefully with his form up, we get a closer match and a better Inferno overall and a happier interview with Cold Zera, who's been great even in the Losers interview, by the way. I'd like to shout out Cold Zera for being so open and honest um, about, uh, about, about the team, even when you know he's had to do it. He's done it with a smile on his face and these Losers interviews are pretty cool. Gonna be the B site tested to start off the pistol. Nico blind, just tapping through that narrow angle, finding the headshot versus Hampus. Brokey, he's gonna do his best impression, also dealing damage through these smokes. So a five versus four retake on the B site. They already have that banana control. Three CTs dogpiling upon one another as Plopsky sits inside of the smoke. It finally fades. He dies to Brokey. It's not going too well for the T's. It's all on twist and he's down. One frag in the pistol for Nip. It's FaZe Clan on the board first. We had a friendly bet uh, before the game between uh, Maniac and Pimp on who would who would top frag, and I and I would like to get your thoughts on this too. I think for Pimp he said uh, Knock and and Nico, and uh, Maniac said Knock and who was it? So, knock and no, it wasn't Cold Zera. Axel, our producer, said Cold Zera, and I can't remember. You you said Cold Zera, Maniac. Okay. Okay, and yeah, Maniac says Cold Zera. Okay, thank you, Maniac. So, but you know what? After that conversation, I realized there's potential for everybody here. You know, we saw that map last map from from Hampus, who was who was by far and away the best player. Like, not even it wasn't even really close. Just over 180 yard. You could see the impact every single round, and it really makes you wonder. Now we know Twist is extremely clutch on this map, so he's my pick. But I get the knock lean. I really do. I think it's fair to expect big things from him. Flashbang for BMAS. Sent into the apartments on a dangerous mission, but he extracts with full HP. And we're going to have the T's commit here on short. So five players for the ninjas all trying to head into this bomb site where Brokey looks to hold, but it's the flying Mac 10s that prove to be too much. And that ump, well, it bests Cold Zera inside of the pit. So his single kill, despite there being substantial damage on two to three of these other players for Nip, is enough. They just clear that A site with absolute aggression, and they bounce back after losing pistol. We're tied at one round apiece. I'm big on that front smoke execute that they use, and that's one of the scariest places you can take, of course, the lane, the lane and the halls. But because of the smoke sectioning off the site, moto, front site, they were they allowed themselves to isolate both fights really well. And I mean, jumping right into their faces with the SMG is kind of all you need. Tough situation for FaZe in that spot. Dropping round number two to a very mixed bag in terms of the buy, but uh, a very formidable execute. I mean, you cannot... You, can, you almost cannot blame FaZe for losing in that spot. It's not like they had bad positions played. Um, they were only maybe lacking on some information, but needed to at least get a kill apiece. But the utility really pressed the advantage for NIP there. And on this round, it's a situation where they're thinking about the counter force. They're investing on a couple of players. Cold Zero is the only, the only, the really one, the only person, excuse me, who's gone down to zero basically. They recycled the M4 on Nico. They're still scary into this round. Four sets of armor. But we saw what NIP did last round with all that utility in their favor. Deep banana control for Rain. He's going to re-deploy a smoke. And hope that 5Ts don't decide to come charging through it, especially as he burns off half the magazine of MP9. But no, they fall back. So they got the info, and now they want to maybe cheat back over towards the A site. If they do it fast enough, then maybe they get ahead of this rush, but it will be a mirrored image from the last round. Ninjas, same stuff, different attempt. They're going to walk right in. Rez clears that second player, so he's gotten both of the headshots, but he also has the bomb. Nico able to add one to the tally for the CT side, but he is pinned into Moto, and he needs to leave. 
It's the two weapons still up for FaZe Clan. MP9, nice quick headshot versus Twist. <laughs> Maybe that's enough to stick to this. It looks like Rain will gamble his life away. Just the MP9 to lose, but that M4 too valuable. So Nico is gone, and so is this third round. Gone to the way of ninjas. I think there were one smoke less on this execute, but it was really uh, still uh, so scary. I mean, they, their timing is nice. We I've seen this execute from Nip a few times, and it's been off and on. It's always scary, of course, to go up lane before getting information or a kill, but they're punishing this passive setup from the CTs. As we can see, two players dying within the site, one dying at Moto on the other side of a smoke trying to boost. And that's the path of least resistance for, for Nip. No one's spamming through a smoke at Arch. No one's taking the fight at Boiler from lane. And NIP can get away with it once again. Love to see how this would work on the full buy. Don't know if NIP are going to try it again, but open, open route onto the site, wrapping and pressing their advantage again with some good flashbangs. One from Twist, I think there, and uh, just great spacing overall. So phase in a very similar situation, almost to what they were in last round, with the recycled, grandfathered in uh, M4 on Nico and uh, Reigns MP9. They'll go for an early peek. They don't do all of the banana presents, so maybe Nico thinks that he can catch one person off guard. But NIP are fully prepared. Yep. And then immediately they deploy the double Molotov. They flash into the bomb site. So they're trying to keep up the pressure with this initial kill. You know, there's a world where there's a rotator coming over, but that really isn't the case. Base Clan have instead decided to, off of that first death, stack up on the A site. Now, considering that the ninjas have come to A in both of their successful rounds, maybe they anticipate that they'll try it a third time. But with that early kill at B, and then the con continuity of ninjas moving in, the bomb does get recalled to the proper site. They dodge this stack up. So even losing that one player is not the end of the day for Nip. They even leave a player in position towards apartments and knock. Maybe he can claw back that lost Fomus. Yeah, I was thinking he was if he was going to go and try to sit on it inside the halls. But yeah, he, he lets it go, really, and is just thinking about retake positions, which is kind of interesting. He might be opened up to get more kills than he could if he had sat there and, and taken a fight. Yeah, look at this. Oh, wants to close the distance a little bit with the MAC-10. Yeah, it's good enough. Controls the spray. Not enough to get both kills, but yeah, rain low. He'll recover the FAMAS. Deeks here. The exit, you'd assume, would be towards Banana, but they're going to go ahead and push this Deagle. Yeah, nice position from Brokey here on top of the well. Not one you see too often. And as the bomb pops, nice. They deal with Rain. He was that, uh, that last chance saloon for FaZe Clan. So three in a row for the ninjas, but we do have the CTs back on a buy. Yeah, good amount of damage so far. It's 12 kills here for FaZe Clan in the first four rounds, which is definitely nice. It's still, you can see the money is honest here for NIP. So we'll get another full execute, or sorry, we'll, we'll have the potential for another full execute as Nip have way more utility. FaZe will struggle potentially to hold down Banana, but we don't know if they're going to try it. It looks like they've opted in for the passive setup this time around. Rain M4 to push up. I think he's maybe waiting for a flash here. Oh, he's dropping a nade and falling back. I like how fast NIP are moving on this round. Not second guessing the fact that they've been giving top banana. Ooh, yeah, they're going to go right in. Feeling that space that they had for free last round. They don't even need the opening kill to decide to commit. It's the all in from the ninjas. The bomb plant goes down. Two casualties stacked up. And yet again, FaZe, the rest of their team is nowhere nearby. So Nip, just not pausing whatsoever here, Launders. Charging straight through and it looks fantastic. I mean, it's great, yeah. Like, why, you know, again, you'd be a fool not to invite yourself into a free banana, right? You're going to take that top banana control, move into the execute. It just makes a lot of sense. It might fail sometimes, but look, you you get the two kills. Rotation is way too far for the CTs. You're punishing the fact that FaZe have played full passive on these setups. And here's the thing. Uh, for NIP in their last two matches, they've had 8 seven, half on the CT side versus Ents. And then uh, I think at 9-6 in their other win versus Vitality. So they lean a little bit heavier towards the CT side and already are starting off hot here on T side. No signs of slowing down. It's cool to see they've cleaned it up. You can actually viscerally feel the improvements from uh, the, the last couple of times that they played and the confidence seems very high. Kind of nuts, all of this considered coming out of the first map. Right, that first map seemed, uh, seemed so lopsided. Let's see if we can get that flash of talent out of FaZe Clan that they definitely had on the opening map. 
you know, they made a mistake or two, but bygones be bygones. Flash to the half wall, yeah, push Rain back. He's alone, and we haven't seen Nip switch sites too often. This time, it looks like it might be the move. 2-3 here for FaZe, off moving over towards B. So somehow A is much less fortified. Of course, an arch smoke blows up this spot entirely. That will go down. CT's looking for the boost. What does the boost find? Oh, <laughs> nothing oh but some God. resistance. Twist. Man, uh, he peeks right into that one. And Nico, he's got to dodge the grenade or else, yeah, he's done for. Oh. All the while, Rez, he's entered over towards Banana as well. So it's just rain on the Deagle here, holding off at B. B mass in pit at A. With no bomb being picked up by Nip right now, they do still have the options. And it looks like they want to pinch this Deagle player before somebody doubles back with bomb. Unless we get... knock. Yeah. Can you get the entry oh, just beneath him? Easy. Oof. So now Can we bomb get that uh, perspective from Twist? I'd like to see if he uh, like hard cleared that Whoa. boost or if he just adjusted when swinging on Arch because it, it it felt like looking from the CT's perspective that he got hard cleared. But you know that's kind of nuts to to clear a boost like that. You don't see that boost all the time. Oh wow, he really does. Yeah, he looks for it kind of instantly here, and of, of course gets the second kill on Nico after doing some residual damage through the smoke with that spray. Pretty exciting stuff here for NIP. Oh, almost. Yeah, looking for a couple seconds advantage on that run boost. Just crowd surfing his Whoa, way down. Oh, this pressure up mid. Oh, off shot missed. This is huge. Broke yes, pull back hell. through his CT smoke. Yeah, they do not stop the T's. This is tough. No offer Bimis. And he's going to go ahead and cut one off at the apartments. There was like six Molotovs Ooh. burning across the map. But VMAS, he's been able to get that second kill. So three versus five. Ninjas on the back foot and Nico behind them. He's going to round this corner right into the head of Flopsky. He throws the bomb up onto the hay bales. And VMAS coming in big. A three-piece from the apartments to start. Knock. He's going to line up two bodies. He still has lots of health. But VMAS is done with him. Four frags in one round. A second on the board for FaZe. Yeah, welcome. 29 to 83 ADR in that one round alone. All three kills. He had everything to do. His teammates were smoked out. I mean, he was left alone on this island in the apartments. Had to put up all three kills. Beautiful stuff. I mean, he had to put up two. Not to be fair, you know, 1v5 situation. But yeah, played his spots of perfection. Denied the possibility for a plant. Yeah, and his heroics are the reason that we have a little bit more faith now in phase on this on this map. Yep. We're not going to see that performance versus big. It's going to be a largely in part due to the uh, mass putting in some more work, I'm sure. Yeah, good grenade. Not too bad. Nico. Hey, it helps him get the kill, too. Yeah, he shaves off Hompus to start this round. So fire forces the feet forward. Nico's flashbang going high. Does he want to play off of this? He's got two players behind him. So yeah, they're going to try to disrupt this setup. Rain, he's meant to set the flash, but they take down Brokey first. Nico, he's going to extend as that flash pops right in the faces of the ninjas. He lays down his own smoke to give him a chance at exiting, to give him a chance at going for more. Oh. He doesn't want the exit. He kicks in the front door and ninjas, they're going to lose another phase clan. Three rounds to five. Wave in the faux fo. That was sick. That was sick. I mean, this couldn't have worked out better. Even dodges the flash looking forward. I mean, he could have been turned around in preparation, but instead made sure to take advantage of every second. Like, just in case the push came out, abusing that kill, turning from the flash, grabbing the next one. Amaz amazing stuff from Nico, of course, as we always expect. And now NIP will have to respect the tempo a bit, slowing it down. Working a bit harder for the map control. Phase plan are taking them to that next level of effort. Get a bit of a stagnant round. Finally, a chance to, to maybe catch their breath because honestly, we'd had some really fast rounds. I'm still shocked by the speed, the tenacity of that one mid hit from the ninjas. But knowing that the economy is all on the line, I'm down with them to go back into a more tempered aggression. Still, phase in this setup, they are inviting in all options. 
and are weak to rotations. Bro, he got neutralized the last time around. He was holding on to Arch. Dropped the shot. Wasn't an easy shot, but still. That looks like Nip. Yeah, they're back to old ways. Ooh, cold. He takes a bit of damage. He's sussing out the situation and dealing with Rez. Rez, he was cut oh. off from the rest of his team. Brokey nearly with a chance for a shot in the apps, but instead he swings the op back and drops Hampus on Arch instead. That's good. Strong stuff for him. It allows him to just hyper-focus on lane. And ninjas, they want to walk away. 15 seconds left over, and they do not fancy their chances of running into the A site. But even as they try to retreat, Rain's got something for them. He's going to take down one of those weapons, and it looks like two will survive. They didn't. They tried something new. They wanted to, I feel like they opened up the ability to go for that lane hit once again. They even established at top bracket with the B players inside the site. I mean, they did everything they were supposed to. But then as soon as they drop one frag, it turns into some kind of really disjointed default. The lurks come out. They end up getting picked off. Brokey had the opportunity to get the Hall's kill as well as the Arch kill, which is obviously a bad sign for NIP. The repeated flashes from Cold Zera into lane helped a lot. Leading by Xampus, Hampus has now had eight 1.3 plus rating Mirage games in 2020 so far. Wow, that's, yeah, I mean, 1.3 rating. That is nothing to scoff at. And um, for those who missed it, of course, Hampus over 180R on Mirage just now. Well, that's a that's a very cool stat line. And again, to talk about this, the individuals on Inferno, we've seen them all do so well on this map. It's a really friendly map, I think, to most of the talent in the server. And of course, uh, Bimus, Bimus having a better day having a better day so the match pause is called and i think i wonder what happens if nip try that full lane execute again that they did in those first few rounds in that situation where they got all the map control they wanted to throwing the plans out the window seemed to make it look way too easy for phase clan yeah phase really thriving in some of the chaos oh man down God, imagine just standing there with all your friends and suddenly someone drops dead. Yeah. Ooh. Nobody's even checking on wood. him. It's a scary sign of things that are to potentially come their way. Ninjas, not everybody firing off on full weapons this round. They sure as hell have full utility, but we do have three pistol players in the mix. Yeah, they, they shelf banana for a second. CT's moving down completely silent. Haven't wasted any grenades just yet. Now the smoke comes out, but this is pretty big for FaZe. You know, holding on to this many grenades. Uh, we, as we can see, Nico and Rain both have their incendiaries left with bottom banana control. That's an in incredible luxury. They can fortify A. And of course, we're looking at Nip on a, a force up. They only have two good guns to work with. Close position for Twist. No CT is going to walk into him. Cold Zera ready to respond to all of it. Wow, good flashbang from Brokey. And it is three kills up for the CTs. Man advantage for the defense. Brokey, his position known. And some shots swing by. But Rain arrives and Brokey blows his brains out. That is FaZe Clan with a fifth. And they seem to be getting a hold, an understanding as to how to deal with this A hit that got ninjas on the board to begin with. Yeah, I mean, the lane flashes have been perfect from Brokey to help out Cold Zera. Cold Zera, you know, deserves just as much credit for understanding the timings as Brokey does for throwing them. It's not like a hard flash to throw, but yeah, they've been seamless about this. And Brokey's hands are never tied up in those situations. Cold Zera always knows when he needs them. And that synergy is working out quite well. So... Now NIP will have to take a backseat in this round. They're starting to drop off a bit. They had one sketchy round so far. Lots of great T rounds to look back on. But phase, they've been relatively consistent. They've, they've dealt with nice they've adapted and... On the money. See if the T's try to clamor back into this one. Rain, he is ready for it. 
We get some deagle shots popping off, but it's that solo deagle left up for the ninjas. I love this aggression coming out of FaZe Clan. Just flexing the utility advantage, blowing a hole open down banana, and then following through with quick executions. Sure, they've taken some damage here, but not a single casualty racking up versus FaZe Clan. This is going to be great for the money, great for the momentum, and honestly, great for the scoreline. They've got ninjas stalled at five. Well, he'll give it his best shot. Five alive. Nico, 10 and four. Reset. No op here. A twist. Yeah, no, he's got it. Okay. So now, like, there's a couple of options. If they try, I wonder if they want to try to punish FaZe for taking that banana control early. Because again, it feels like FaZe, they're audacious enough to try to walk out onto the half wall. And I wonder if they're just going to try to attempt that again. They've got the all passive, which is nice because they can keep information here safely and see if they can perform a walkout again. I mean, holding grenades seems to be their prerogative. The grenade that paid off last round does nothing this time. What's piqued your interest? Well, the, the nade goes over, they peek the half wall, so they've got some information top banana. Whoa, nade's off by a, a small margin. It's supposed to go to oranges, of course, so not meant to land where Nico's standing. Yeah, he's currently positioned here on the front steps. Whoa, he is tucked into the corner. He's got bare bones cover. And if there was any extension there from the ninjas, he could have been just dead in no man's land. He body blocks the smoke ever so slightly. There are still three CTs here on the site and 50 seconds left over, bomb back and spawn. We get this additional volley of utilities being thrown over the A site. So ninjas just trying to fake presence over on A while they do double back to the B site. So this is it. This is going to be the commitment with 30 They've seconds no left over. Dogs. Nope, but that smoke still up in the face of NIP. Rain, deep emo, Cold Zero right in front of him. Nico as well, trying to play over towards the new box. They have the element of surprise. They don't know the numbers, and Rain's doing it all on his own for the time being. Now Nico's op coming into the play, coming into fruition. As he drops another smoke down in front of him, he's just burning it all down with the timing. 10 seconds left. Oh. Twist and Hampus trying to find a solution, but the answer's not there. Phase Clan, seven rounds to five. Well, that was so damn perfect from Nico. You know, even the wall bank to show us that he knows exactly where the fights are coming from. You couldn't have asked for better utility usage there. They, he made, he made impre his presence last known. They didn't even know about the second emo guy. They, that guy hadn't even peaked yet. So there are so many outs for FaZe to win in this round. And again, no incendiaries for those two very important positions at the back of B um, for NIP to take. So they expel a lot of their utility early on. It ends up costing them late into the round. FaZe doing a good job of kind of starving them out. And again, they're doing a great job of holding grenades. Right uh -oh. into them. Ooh, the second. A quick scope in from Nico, but a quick couple of kills back for the pistols. It seems like ninjas are just going to try to throw themselves against this B site. And luckily for them, there is no third player hiding in the corners this time around. But they still seem a little hesitant. They slow down ever so slightly. Excellent flashbang coming through from spawn. But cold, he can't make the most of it. Knock brings him back. And while bombs still not planted, they anticipate a bit more aggression out of the CTs. And both are here. You've got Brokey tucked back behind pillars. It's him and BMAS in the two versus three. The utility thrown forward and the molly flushes nothing out. Rez oh is boy. right there. Just a little bit more of a peek oh and my Brokey. God. He takes his elbow straight off. Now it's an actual Health advantage over top of Knock and Twist doesn't actually have a real gun to play with. He's on the other side of the smoke and Brokey nearly calls him out. They're trying to focus oh. forward, but they deal with the flank first and foremost. Here comes Knock back in with the first, but BMAS trades. He's got the kit. He's going to jump right on top of it. It comes pretty close, but he's got it. This is phases eight. So beautiful from Brokey. He knew exactly where those fights were going to be, each of them. It's so cool to see that, like, trying to bait out the smoke fight, uh, you know, turning back after he thinks 
that he's forgotten about it. Yeah, no problem. I mean, even in response to just the footsteps there. And Rez, he was so careful on that angle. And this is after a really scary situation where they drop the off to the guys in the post plant. Plus, uh, Rain doesn't get his other kill after Nico gets two. Second one with a no scope on top of it. And oh, okay. Well, Nico, he, he tries for it. He's He had the spawn. Incendiary calls him out. I think a spot of damage helps him die quicker, uh, more quickly. And this is maybe the advantage that NIP needs to win around at this point because FaZe definitely looks a lot better now. And starting to now we're starting to see a mirror image. NIP struggling a little bit more on their T side, even though they started off strong. Nice, Cold Zera. This is this is I want to say a first. We haven't seen many moments where there's the double peak in apartments. We've had VMAS there alone at times, you know, trying to hold off the numbers. But that deeper position from Cold Zera serves as an excellent way to take that second kill. Now, Rain, he's going to be on the top of Oranges. He has three Ts moving past him. An excellent flash. No, excuse me. It's actually Rez blinding his teammate ever so slightly. So, define excellent. Not quite. Flash back. This time, it does blind the opera, but Cold Zera saw him for sure. Takes Rez off of the top box, and now it's Twist 1v3. The entirety of FaZe Clan coming in from their spawn. He hears the footsteps on the closest part of the site, and he wins the first fight, but he loses so much of his health that he should never finish this clutch. And as he goes for the smoke spam, BMAS puts shots back through it. This is FaZe with a ninth. Yeah, he really gives it his best shot there, but FaZe, I mean, they look good. They actually gave up that opening kill, as we saw. You know, Nico going for the alt peak, but as you mentioned, it's the double push in the halls that we haven't seen so far this half that allows them to sneak back into it. And uh, yeah, the, the hold is just good enough. The retake is even better. B retakes have been pretty solid so far from FaZe Clan from what we've seen. And now we're into round 15 and NIP just looking for six. After the start, you'd think they were on for at least an eight, nine round half. But FaZe, they definitely look good. Look at the utility. All right, all right. They're going to go for this round again. They're going to charge right along to Arch Cold Zera in from the corner. Gets that second kill. Drops the bomb in front of him. And this should make for a hell of a difficult mid round for ninjas. They do blow Cold Zera out of the corner. So that's something. Alleviates a little bit of pressure. And with a smoke in the face of Brokey, they get that bomb back. But here's Rain up from mid, cutting it off a second time as BMAS activates down the lane. Hompus turns back around. He wants to call out this peak, which he will, but and string a hell of a round count together. And they've doubled up the score of ninjas in pajamas as they take to the T side of Inferno. A 1.13 odds for FaZe Clan to close this series. Each team securing their opponent's map choice. It's been a wild affair that got us here. And now there's one half left. Never forget, elimination on the line. So pressure is mounting for the ninjas. They're looking forward to CT side, but they definitely normally have a slightly better T side to fall back on. So here... No, the pressure is really, really on on this pistol. Three T, three CT setup could be good. They're kind of good spots to stop this hold. Phase, they've got nades though. Yeah, where's this molly go? This might separate one of the three. Seems to burn twist out of his position. And he was lining up some counter utility. So he's gonna go ahead and throw that flash out. It's gonna activate knock, looking for headshots. Plopsky also in with one, that flash with two assists already. And Plopsky's position just so pinned down at the moment. The T's, they get their feet close to the bomb site, but they definitely don't get on it because ninjas are on one. Oh my goodness, what a pistol. It was nothing but headshots. Yeah, it was actually good a good strat from both sides. I mean, the setup is right for a B site hold, but then the utility from the T side made things alarming for the CTs to hold the Molotov coming in, the flashes in, in pretty good spots. But yeah, everybody hitting their shots. And once that uh, Molotov extinguishes, of course, Twist is back in the fight and they couldn't get the other two kills. So let's see if Nip, this version of Nip can conjure up their own version of magic because they've got a, a hell of a road back to... Uh, to winning but they at least get the pistol to ease things up and phase since they didn't get a plant they aren't buying five glocks money making round here for nip there's some it's the res and compass 
wombo combo inside of the apartments. Little left and right peek gets the 5v4. Now the walk up on middle for FaZe Clan. Working with just the Glocks. Will they get a single kill? Seems possible. Knock, he's been taken to 47 HP. He's got a teammate in front of him to protect, of course, and Rez. Oh my god, he's got no cover, but he manages to survive. His teammates bail him out of a sticky situation. Ninjas convert successfully. I've actually found that pillar so frustrating. Like, uh, on, on CG side, it's so powerful, but it's just, it's so annoying to try to entry up from mid and have to spam through that. Like, you waste a lot of bullets doing four or five damage on shots trying to chip through the stone. And if, if someone doesn't peek you, well, you you, you got to pre-fire, there's no point. But yeah, now Nip within three. Instant buy-up. Nades go both ways. He's separated from their friends. Smoke down in mid as well to try to dissuade any mid pop, but it looks like it's coming whether they like it or not. Yep. Oh my God, the flash is fantastic. Nice timing. It's gonna be Nico to get both of those first two kills. Rez pressured behind the box. He's got the element of surprise on rain. There's a good headshot and he follows it up with the kill onto BMAS. He has primed his last two teammates to come in on the retake. And FaZe Clan using a bit too much utility there, double smoking the same position. That burns out everything they had left except the flash on Nico. But Ninjas, that's a daunting retake to even try to challenge. Such a good attempt there from Rez. He gets the first kill. He hits the headshot on the second player jumping up on default. Goes and moves the crosshair before he finishes that frag to take a third one entirely. Excellent attempt, but the Fomus, well, the Fomus leaves him a little short. And it seems like Nox going to be the only survivor here for the ninjas. FaZe Clan right back in control. Yeah, yeah, for real. That, it was definitely a good attempt on the hold. This is Whoa. Knock. I mean, he wants to save. He's going to have a couple of more targets coming his way. Oh, boy. Expect the swing. Oh, he doesn't oh even die. Wow, he actually gets a kill, too. That's two AKs down for FaZe Clan. So they can buy up again. But yeah, it's actually very costly because of those two frags. And uh, it's a dangerous gun to have into this one. But what a flash. It was just, it was just perfect for that setup specifically. No one was going to play anti-flash in that situation, sitting behind a smoke. Just getting in position at the at the top of mid. And that is of course the problem with trying to trust Whoa. it too much. Twist. He misses the shot, but he gets the information. Fast up alt and now the CTs have already started to regroup. Looks like they want to get ahead of the A hit. Ninja's making the right call for the time being. Phase. They do face a deep smoke on Banana, so Brokey's going to double back and just kind of sniff around. Nobody deep for the ninjas because they just hold one on CT cross, enabling this four-man A stack. This is quite interesting. I actually love this phase feeding into their fear that they might run it back. So the CTs can't stay passive here. I don't feel like FaZe are actually going to commit to B. It looks like, yeah, with the bomb still top of mid, they just want to draw a CT back. They get that in knock. That's a big talent to be on the wrong site. Most definitely. It alleviates pressure off of the arch side as well. It's just twist there with the op, and he's glass cannon. Can so they pull one more? Maybe. If they do, it would leave the last two ninjas on A isolated on lane. Nikos picked up that bomb and he groups with his two teammates here at the top of mid all the while FaZe still trying to sell this fake but they haven't drawn that second rotator twist he is still sitting inside of Arch but it looks like he wants to move forward here yeah he's gonna walk in missing his oh. chance as Brokey gets in just in time now the hold from Rez and Hompus each one getting a kill apiece but the bombs picked back up and Plopsky deals with the B hit as the time still affords them a plant FaZe Clan, 2v1 post plant. Plopsky, not much to do in this one. Does he even want to chance it? Man, he's thinking about it, but I'm with you. I don't know. I feel like he's going to turn this around if a kill doesn't come right away. Bomb timer ticked down halfway, and yeah, he's not close to a kill. And no one's coming out for free, and he can get the op from Twist if that's not taken... Yep. At the very least, so. But Brokey's walking up. Brokey's coming for the same thing, and Brokey's yeah. going to clothesline him. Yeah, oh, that's yeah, the 12th one for FaZe. Maybe should have grabbed it and just went instead of uh, trying to get the kill as well, but thought he was potentially being hunted. 
maybe Agreed. by someone on Moto. So maybe that was his version of the safest safest attempt on that. But man, phase, I, yo, credit to Twist, that looked extremely convincing. Like the amount of the two tier execute plus a player committing to the B site plus banana control, even with top mid presence, you have to give credit to Twist for not running away from that. But when he peeks in the lane, you know, he drops a shot and gets traded out. And that's unfortunately the round. But seriously, I, I feel like uh, I wouldn't have been shocked if, if ninjas decided to rotate three out. I think that execute looked terrifying from phase. Well, versus just the pistol, Nip shouldn't look terrifying at all. I have a hunch phase clan. They want to run rampant with this momentum here, but again, they'll leave bomb back. So not trying to fumble it, not trying to give the ninjas any sort of an opening. Maybe a little wall boost will do them some good. Yeah, anything works on a round like this. Oh, and it's not the most perfect of smokes, Rez. He is going to find that angle over top of it. Nico, he answers back by watching the smokes, but they're coming at him from all angles. Unfortunately, it's not that well timed. It's one versus one after one versus one. And Nico oh, survives both challenges. But yeah, letting his guard down is going to enable Twist to come in from the back. Hoppus has also been spotted, so they know that Ooh. it's the two CT still here, but that's the bomb carrier the bomb. trying to run. Oh, and no, Twist, yeah. he gets Brokey just before he rounds the corner. Imagine that had been the bomb carrier. Instead, Rain, well, at least Brokey doesn't die in vain. They get that bomb to A. Bomb has been planted. I think it'll be another attempt where they hope to get a free kill, but I don't know if it's worthwhile to try to take this fight because they don't have armor on either player and they're saving an op. Maybe, I guess they see an opportunity. It's a bit risky, but I can see why they want to try it. And they'll try their damnedest. Already up around the lane. Nobody facing. We've got Rain just hiding in the back of the site. Hoppus, he's clearing all the corners except for the most crucial one. And the moment that happens, you know Twist ejects. That op way too valuable. But a 13th round for FaZe Clan, made scary by the fact that they just fed bodies into Nico. He lets his guard down for a moment and it almost, almost cost them. I love the chase there from Nip as well, knowing that they had to not allow FaZe to get to the other side of the map because the retake, near impossible. Yeah, it was easily the best play to go and try to suss it out. And yeah, you, you can see why Nip are, are tempted to take really risky rounds like that into consideration because they're you know only on, th on these seven rounds. FaZe look very strong on this T side, very well-rounded talent showing up. Okay, so what do you phase want to try this time? I am, uh... I'm, I'm enthralled by this phase, he said. Really, really cool stuff that we're seeing. They were able to abuse and push that advantage of taking map control to its, its limits on that last round with that fake. Here's some good damage done by Nip, and they're being a bit more stubborn about holding on to bracket for as long as they can, which is good to see. Solo behold gets smoked off. It's got cross map smoke from T ramp. We do have knock drawn over by it. And of course, Plopsky plays in front of it. So he sees that nobody's creeping through just yet. A daunting task to go running through smoke on B. 45 seconds left over, and the bomb seal seems to be floating on the opposite side of the map. Options open. I wonder if B is actually more tempting. It looks like they're doing the exact same strategy to see if they can pull the rotations. I wonder if Nip bit the bite this time. I think this is kind of interesting, but Nip, I mean... They stayed pretty confident last time. Yeah, Twist hasn't moved a muscle. He's doing fine. Excellent first kill. He's immediately going to reposition into the bomb site, so they know they just have to guard the plant zone for the next 10 seconds or else phase. They've just gone ahead and played themselves. Yeah, they realize there's no chance at getting in here. Had Twist not connected that shot, then maybe they try to just smash themselves against the site. But More this than wave that. just fizzles out and FaZe Clan lose the round. More than that, it's about Twist not moving, you know, like he's he's not even not only is he not moving this time, he's in a better spot and more confident that the that the X coming. 
He's not responding at all to the information over on the B site. And credit to the B players if they're the ones corroborating the information that this looks similar to last time, don't move, whatever, because he has limited uh, limited info on what they're seeing. So nobody freaking out from NIP is what wins on the round. And uh, now that FaZe has been called out, I think uh, they'll lose a bit of confidence in, in, in trying to pull off a fake similar to that. Whether or not they lose confidence, they lose economy, and they lose guns because of it. We just have Cold Zera on the Deagle. No money left over here for FaZe Clan. So that patience, that stability given to them by Twist and his resistance to moving in the last round has given the Ninjas a very real chance on this CT side. But they've got to convert this round. They've got to follow through with what should be easier anti-Ecos to follow suit. Flash. Flopsky. Yeah, Ooh, flashed and primed. Leave. <laughs> Get out while you can. Yeah, it's a bit awkward. Look at, man, they have basically no grenades left besides these smokes. The, uh, yeah, FaZe having to save. This is not the kind of situation you plan for. Saving with four, barely being able to rebuy grenades and having a player on just a pistol. They're going to have to make it up on the fly. Where is that incendiary? Plotsky. Yeah, he's over on the B site as well. 30 seconds left. This incendiary could yep. change the game. Just throw that down. T's do have two smokes, so they could technically extinguish it, but they've got to make this ultimatum. It's either HP or vision. And as the 20 second mark hits the clock, down goes that Molotov. They are going to decide to just try to play right through it, but the first two skewered by Nuke, Knock, and Plotsky. Down goes Plopsky on the bomb site. There is still time for the plant. Six seconds. If he gets the spray, then that's it. But no, Nico still able to put it down. So it's a man advantage up for ninjas in pajamas. They've got a player wrapping around the banana, and that's going to put BMAS in a very awkward spot. He has no cover, and the T's, no utilities. One of the two last flashbangs goes up. Brokey taking a player down with him, but a very snappy headshot there from Rez to bring it down, still to the man advantage. Bomb past the halfway point. Hapas, he's gonna round the corner again. It's the trade, one and done after one and done, but Nico, he needs two. And Hapas able to get the frag, but the timing, it's gonna come down to the wire. Instead, it's ninjas yet again. Oh man, that fantastic trades, obviously, on the retake. Killing the op on quad is everything, no matter what. Dropping a guy for that frag means nothing. That is the guy who is going to be the most terrifying up until the last kill. Remember Modern Warfare 2? Bimus, no. Bimus was six years old when FaZe was founded and had just turned 10 when Nip won their only major. Oh my gosh. Whereas no shortage of, shortage of stories like this. But man, this uh, this game is, is crazy tight now. We've got these past couple of rounds. There's overall a pretty good hold from NIP, a bit of a flub on that save from FaZe. And that's affected their money a bit here moving into this round. So NIP get back on their feet. There's still enough of a buffer between phase and and 15 rounds that they can, you know, afford to lose one and still be kind of okay mentally. I feel like 14 is a much scarier number. Um, and uh, yeah, NIP, huge grenade advantage. And again, we look to their CT side to be better than their T side. Maybe not a 10-5 a half better, but of course, you know, there, there's always time to do to, to reach even higher heights. Oh, yes. Come on. More Ooh, of that. Jesus. I don't care who. I don't care when. I don't care how. Oh, the no. The Juan start connecting its big stuff. Rez, he's going to get ahead of this. Oh, he drops both the offers oh. and the third. Rez, the one man no. hold. All four kills here on the lane. Ninjas into the double digits. It looks scary thanks to Nico, but that one got shut down real quick. You know, that could have just been the round. If Nico got that off, they turn that off into uh, into another frag from Cold Zera, and then Rez, he goes, lights out. 17 kills on three players for NIP, and you want that talent spread out on the CT side, because of course it's going to come down to the site holds more often than not. Oh, they missed the run boost slightly. That could have made for a bit of awkward timing, but uh, nobody actually sprints through the apartments or anything wild like that. So they're not punished for missing their boost. We started off with a deep engagement of grenades on B. 
And now that flashbang over the top of mid, Rez is pinned into this corner. And at any moment, he could peek out into the T's. They throw a smoke past him. A nice flash connects here to the eyes of Cold Zera, but he, he fired his gun. They know he's in there. They're going to soften him up with the grenades. And he puts down the smoke. So no this Molotov teammate. can actually unroot him. Yeah, this is interesting. I mean, his spot is still scary. They try to <gasps> oh, spam no! him down. Oh, a nice trade from Nock, but okay. Yeah, it's the opening no, kill the for Nock kill. as well. Yep. That's a little bit awkward. <laughs> FaZe, they couldn't deal with the player in the cubby, so ninjas deal with it instead. Oh, awkward timing for that No unfold. idea. Oh my god, Cold Zera's patience. See if Twist can stand the test of time. No, he ducks out. This is it. This is ninjas offering a 14th round to FaZe, unless maybe Twist can stop them randomly through the smoke, but that doesn't work out for him either. An awkward situation on Arch side, and I think you nailed it, Humpus did not seem quite ready for that close push on lane. It's hard to know if that if the team kill was inconsequential or consequential because you don't know if Nico would have finished them off before dying. But uh, of course, even if Rez lives there with one HP, he's a huge... But uh, of course, even if Rez lives there with one HP, he's a huge problem for FaZe if they have no HPs left. Sitting inside of the smoke, Maintaining that crossfire with knock, it powers knock up to be able to take peaks that are scary for phase. And of course, Rez, since, since he's got nothing to lose, could potentially peak as well. So yeah, it might have been a very important team kill. We don't really know for sure. Um, but yeah, like Cold Zero is definitely eyes set on spraying him down no matter what. And yeah, it's it's a cup, it's an awkward situation, awkward responses, and it's Hampus to get caught off guard to, I mean, icing on the cake there for FaZe Clan. 14 rounds, and it's a double op adjustment here for NIP. I like that. You know, as an emergency adjustment, it's great. Just to fortify sites is great. It's great in all situations, but especially if you can't afford to lose another round, it's going to be your last chance to try something like this. Why not? Again, early grenades here for FaZe. Chucking them into the apartments. Throwing them over mid. That Molotov actually pops between the CTs, and we can see them on the radar getting a little bit flustered there on lane. But really, the biggest threat is this B bomb site. So, Nock and Plopski gonna have their hands full. Ooh. Hopefully, not when the players come around the corner. Plopski gets his grenade out early, and because of that, it is substantial damage with no threat back the other way. They don't know about this op. No, sir, they don't. Nock, he's going to have to hit this first shot and then slip back into the bomb site. He does step one. He is pinned into the second oranges. Molotov starting to burn out his teammates, so they extinguish that with smoke. And now it's going to be the close proximity for Plopski. He is 8 and 16, and there's an enemy just on the other side. But he goes ahead, drops the bomb, eats the flash, doubles back, and Nico's now behind him. From the new box, Nico tries to swing wide on smoke, but there's so much smoke that they don't know where the CTs have gotten off to. He's gonna take one. And Brokey, well, he just cleared the player off of the coffins. That's gonna make a little bit more space here for the T's. It's a two versus two post plant, and that bomb goes down behind the fountain. Hoppus knows he's over on new box. The CTs with a health advantage, trying to come in from somewhat different angles. And I wonder if Nico's position on Coffin will be enough. No, he dies to the spam. Now Brokey swings wide. Excellent trade frag, but 24 HP. He needs the headshot, and he's not going to find it. It's Ninjas in Pajamas with 11. One of the highest rated clutch players this year in Brokey. You'd think he'd be able to pull something like that off. He came close. The health was not to his favor. But damn, a scary round, and it cost NIP their double off setup. Twist his two arms, but he can only pick up one of these at one time. Excuse me, Hampus. So yeah, no, NIP, they'll be able to recycle this, but that was a pretty messy situation after having such a great start. You know, the smoke down in the quad actually makes it so Plopski can only peek from one side, which severely limits his position. He gets one kill, but then gets caught off guard by the player pushing through a smoke. I think he eats a teammate's flash, Rez's flash, when he's there at quad as well. Good timing. Rez's 4K to hold down on uh, A on round 23 was his first of the tournament. His first 4K of the tournament? I find that like hard to believe for some reason. That's insane. Cause he's had an extraordinary map already, I'm pretty sure. But anyways, wow. Yeah, I mean 18 kills on this one, first 4K. Wow, what a stat. Man, 14 to 11. And uh that one was 
too close for comfort for NIP. They don't get to fall back on that op again, the second op again, and they have to even, they're even relegated to Falmuses and UMPs. So this is, you know, phase's time to strike. They could really end it here and now. Look at that four man B stack. And then immediate rotation over back towards Twist. He has to run through the Molotov just in case FaZe were right behind it. But they weren't. They've just used their utility a little bit and they want to double back on Banana. So they will look to regain that control still with more than a minute up. So plenty of time for them. And they dodge the follow up frag. And you saw the risk that Twist took sitting in construction as the smoke came up to try to deny the plant. The player swung in front of him, missed the shot. Scary, man. Smoke goes down in front of them, but they still seem like they want to charge right through. Oh, BMAS and Nico, both with crucial headshots on this B site. There's no room for ninjas to deal the damage back. It is executions that make the difference here. Ninjas, they're gonna have to save these weapons. This means FaZe Clan sitting on 15, four map and match points for Nip to try and keep themselves in this. That was a slight miss on the CD smoke on purpose, right? It was to open that up. It like encouraged like Opsy to come to try to spam. Yeah, it denies anybody from being able to do some like flash through antics. And also, yeah, it, it gave them the advantage to actually just take them out. It was instant, man. That was crazy precision from both of those entries. They stood absolutely no chance. Also prevents anybody from boosting up on wall once the yeah. you know cross isn't initiated. Anything like that completely taken away, so. Yeah, they had one in CT every single round. So it was, yeah, wow, that's a nice, nice round from FaZe. They know when to keep it simple. They know how to how to play the the the, the more strung out rounds that are a bit more complicated, resolve more. Uh, re sorry, um, and need more cohesion. But there's a situation where the remedy is just to play it simply, press up on the B exec, on the contact play, call up the spots that are being played with that smoke. Look at the aggression. Ninjas, I love it. They're gonna take a risk here, a calculated risk, but now Hoppus, oh man, almost looked like he was gonna get hung out to dry. Instead, he starts hanging up some of these phase members, two of them down for the count, and BMAS and Nico, and those are big scalps to take. Most importantly, Nico. Top fragger for phase at the moment, and Twist will now, with a little bit less pressure on him, he connects the op shot. It's the two versus four attempt for phase to close now. Seems like when Hampus is most comfortable, he's like running down on a on some kind of flank or aggressive play. And that, yeah, that's insane impact to kick things off. So they don't want to leave it to a situation where it's 5v2 on the B site once again. And IP look to pick up 12 with this one. But yo, honestly, well, FaZe have been great at opening up sites. So I wouldn't be surprised if this comes down to a 2v2. Let's see if Rain can help them out with this. Well, Flopsky is oh, good wow. for the first one. And they have a smoke to put that out. So now Brokey. 1v4, my dude. Ooh, cut punch on the first one, but Nock responds as fast as he has to. His 19th frag secures ninjas their 12th round. Yeah, that was a bit scary, too. They only had the two pistols. They didn't even notice that from NIP. They absolutely needed Hampus to get both those frags. Keeps them alive in this match. Three rounds to go for OT if it's possible. FaZe, have they got any more tricks? NIP, I wonder if it's still on their mind that they want to be able to try to get the 5v4 first. Because these B side takes are getting scarier and scarier. Ooh, had a chance there for Nock. Not an easy shot. Not at all. But deep banana control given over to the ninjas. FaZe Clan could decide to execute forward, but Twist, he's inside the boiler with an off. That's the five versus four. Now Hampus, he's fully okay, flashed. Okay. Still able to deal up two kills yet again. It's Cold Zera and Brokey this time in the 2v4. They've still got okay, their no. bomb and they've got the CT split. Twist plays on the bomb site and Rez, well, he just crossed over to pit. Cold Zera, he's kind of sniffing this one out. He saw the smoke go over towards apartments. And he's just trying to creep this in. He heard that scope. He absolutely knows that the opera's in the middle of the bomb site. But the big question is, can Rez, will Rez, swing wide when the time comes? 
If they dodge the arch player, then it is very much just a two versus two. However, the crossfire is what favors the CTs initially oh. and Cold Zera, he's good for the first one and Brokey goes down. Rez, nice trade frags, crucial 2K and a 13th now for Ninjas. Two more to go if they want OT. Beautiful spray control from Rez on that hold, man. Yeah, and as you pointed out, Cold Zera like, had to line up the perfect pre-fire on the op. I mean... Knowing the op is there is one thing, but the op, you know, you know, he's looking at lane, waiting for this peak, winning the duel is another story. But it looks like we've still got some life in Nip already. You know, basically within one rifle round of bringing this to OT. Almost a full on Glock save, Rain, the only one to upgrade a gun. Still scary on these ecos. And I mean, damage dealt actually matters, I think, for the buy next round for NIP if it's significant. But now this is a very, very tense situation. OT looks very real. NIP look yes, like they're adapting to phase adapting to them in the beginning of the first of the second half. We've seen this from FaZe Clan, that like single P250. It's more often on Cold Zera than anybody else, but it seems like Rain has been tasked with it this time. And Twist to manage the five-man mow down, but it looks like Rain will connect with that upgraded pistol, the only upgraded pistol. And what's wild about this situation is now not only do they mate, no, they can't pick up the gun. Excuse yeah, me. Yeah, they, they have it in line of sight, so it's a bit scary. At least, you know, where Twist dies in the middle of moto, they can't try to grab it without risking dying. Yeah. I mean, they have yeah, the yeah, CTs awkwardly split, but that's it. Yeah, it did seem like they gave a middle of the map control with Whoa. the Oh my god, they'll go and grab it now, right? Yeah, yeah, and Hoppus, he's gonna take early damage. Hoppus, he comes up empty-handed. Four oh Glock god, and a like P250. This. Rez falling to just the standard stock pistol. We have Plopsky in knock in a crucial two versus three retake. This looked like a 30 round game at least. Maybe even a chance for the ninjas to force OT. But now FaZe Clan, again, one P250 have managed this bomb plant. Plopsky, he's gonna see the barrel of the opera, but he gets caught in the crossfire and knock. He's gonna have to do everything. He knows he's in no man's land. VMAT 